why oh why oh why do I have so many lenses <laughs> what's the point when as you probably know if you've seen my videos in any length of time I prefer my all-in-one versatile zoom this is the 18 to 140 Nikkor Nikkor um, lens now when I bought my kit off eBay two years ago two and a bit years ago now I got this Nikon D3200 with a kit lens and it was all you know because I, I wanted to learn I wanted to get out there and understand how it works so I needed a, a camera so the entry-level DSLR was the perfect choice for me it's 24 megapixels crop sensor and then it also came with a zoom lens so I not only got the 18 to 55 but the 70 to 300 mil and I thought yes I've got it I've got all the range I've got potentially macro and I've got zoom <laughs> it was good however I soon came to the conclusion that when you've got 18 to 55 and you've got 70 to 300 there's a little bit in the middle there that's missing you know you haven't got everything so that's when I invested in this nice Tamron 18 to 270 mil and it gave me the depth of including the missing gap <laughs> can I hold this in my hand here the missing gap between those two lenses but still didn't give me the full 300 reach but I was kind of all right with that you know but then I've been going out I subsequently invested come on go down thank you I subsequently invested in the 18 to 140 and this is my go-to lens you know if you've seen me out in the streets you've seen the strap around my shoulder walking talking it just does everything I need it to do so I am in the market for an 18 to 300 I know you can get the 18 to 200 but the 18 to 300 would then just give me everything and I could potentially sell them why would I need them so that's the point of this video is that I'm going to go out into the field and I'm going to put each of these lenses to a test now what I'm going to do is select a subject and take an 18 mil to 55 mil of that subject an 18 to 140 of that subject 18 to 270 and then eight, uh, 70 to 300 all of the same subject so eight photographs all with the different lenses I don't think it's going to give me anything for these three I'll have the same 18 mil picture you know short of the different quality that the lenses might give me for the image but then when it comes to this the um, closest I can get is 300 mil but the shortest focal length will be 70 mil so it should be an interesting little video just to you know exercise the lenses but the big question is what is the point <laughs> so many lenses what is the point so let's go out in the field and see what we can do so out in the field <laughs> there's one caveat that I will say regarding the multiple lenses and uses I'm talking in terms of landscape photography so obviously you're out in the field if you're going to do portrait photography it's highly likely you'll use a nifty 50 or something like that and you know it's just suitable for that kind of thing but when you're out in the field you're doing your landscape photography you know for the most part you might have a wide angle lens because you're taking in a vista and a landscape and that'll be good but I'm using four different lenses so <laughs> let's take a look at this scene this is the view Elam village in the Elam Valley so a nice bit of country landscape so what I've got here I'm thinking what I'll do is place a little yellow image um, a little square so for the 18 to 55 at 18 mil this is the range I'll get the focal range at 55 mil it will be this so the red and yellow squares then if I change the lens to an uh, the 18 to 140 at 18 mil I'll get this 
and then at 140 I'll get this then I'll use my 18 to 270 so I'm really pushing that focal range further at 18 mil I'll get this and at 270 mil I'll get this and then when I use the 70 to 300 mil and I'm using the church as a focal point at 70 mil I'll get this and at 300 mil I'll get this so obviously with the three seven uh, the 70 to 300 I can't pull it back like I would with a wide angle lens so let's take those eight pictures and see how we get on so the first one 18 mil I'm going to try and use the same settings on everything let's just make sure my ISO is fixed at 100 so that I don't have auto ISO raming and that's that's fine it's not it's fixed at 1800 so that's cool uh, ISO 100 f8 one hundredth of a second now I'm choosing f8 because it's a the range on this one <laughs> can't see it on that side I think it's f3.5 on the lowest level but f8 is good it's country isn't it so this is the 18 mil shot it's lovely lovely bit of sunshine and then I'll push it into 55 <laughs> you can see I'm already adjusting because I didn't put the church in the dead center but I want it to be dead center don't I lock that focus in it's still f8 but it wants 125th of a second so there's the 18 to 55 and 18 mil and 55 mil let's change the lens Okay, so we've got the 18 to 140. This is at 18 mil, and that's shot at 150th of a second at F8. So then push that into 140. Oh, yeah, that's doing that. <laughs> 140, getting closer to the church now. Not bad. Let's change the lens. Look at the 18 to 270 on. So at 18 to 270, those three lenses should give me the same 18 mil picture. I'll, t I'll, I'll compare them in a moment. So this is the 18 to 270, f8, one sixtieth of a second. That's at 18 mil. I don't think they're any different in terms of all three of those lenses at 18 mil. Here they are anyway, along the bottom. They kind of look the same. Let's do the 270. Let's get right in with this. I've got to line it up. <laughs> Am I cheating here? I'm getting the subject, aren't I? Because the lens is heavy. There we go. That's it. Here we go. <laughs> it's rather nice. Let's get the last lens. I could have chosen a better location, but I was driving around for a bit. My car's just about tipping over to 140,000. So I've been looking at the speedometer as I've been driving along. Right, let's have a look here. So this, can only start at 70 mil so more than the 18 to 55 put your priority 8 f8 50th of a second at 70 mil that's quite nice actually it's it's better than the you know max for 55 and i'll i'll explain a little more in a minute as to why that is nice we push it to 300 mil, not far off the 270, to be quite honest. I've got an extra 30 millimeter distance from the sensor with the lens. I can almost get in and see the patrons for that Sunday morning service. Oh, 
so that lens is giving me 70 mil versus 300 mil so quite a good scope and range so in terms of an exercise i've got 18 to 55 i've got 18 to 140 18 to 270 and then 70 to 300 so a great range a focal range um and what would I be using all these different ranges for? I think I still go back to my theory that a walkabout lens, and in my case, the 18 to 140, is suitable for this kind of landscape photography. Because I get, for my liking, the, the push and the range that I need. And I, invariably, I wouldn't be able to take a good shot with 300 mil because as you saw from that picture, um, I'll put it here, all I've got is the church. You know, and I don't, I don't get the aspect of the village around. That would probably be a nice shot in the evening with all the lights coming up. Let's go and try this exercise at a different location. Let's head over to the port of Dover, looking down on the ferries and see the difference between the lenses in that environment. <laughs> Come on, let's go. So in terms of the caveat that I mentioned just now at the other section, if you're doing um, nature photography, you're going to want your 500, 800 millimeter lens. So that's perfectly fine. What I'm talking about here is I do landscape photography and street photography. So for me, having the versatility of a, a small zoom lens so it would be your you know maximum 140 maybe up to 200 24 to 200 that kind of thing really works for me i like the versatility of a zoom lens not really big on primes they don't work for me but that's probably my style of photography so i've actually got two things here we've got france it's so clear today and as we swing round, we've got all this lovely wash. So not only would I take a nice photograph of the, you know, the different aspects of the industrial port, but I could get a zoomed in 300 mil. So I'm going to do the exercise with the, the four lenses zooming down on this ferry with my 18 to 55. At 18 mil, I'd get this. And at 55 mil, I'd get this. If I then switch to the 18 to 140, at 80 mil I'll get this, and at 140 I'll get this. Then it would be the 18 to 270, so almost the, the, the longest focal length. At 18, again probably similar to the others, I'll get this, but at 270 I'll get this. And then the restriction of the starting point on the 70 to 300. At 70, I'll get this. And at 300, <laughs> I'll be looking in the windows of the ferry. So let's crack on. Let's get those four shots with each of the different lenses. So, 18 to 55. F8, one hundredth of a second. ISO 100. I love the sky. It's doing some stuff. And then... Zooming in at 55 mil. Fifty-five mil gets me that swap lenses. The eighteen to one forty. I um I'm not expecting a lot of variance on the eighteen mil section of each of these shots. F eight, one sixtieth of a second, hands off the tripod, Smith. <laughs> Zooming in at 140, lock the focus in. It wants a 30th of a second at f8. That's 140. Let's swap lenses. Rather nice. And then at 270, we're really getting in here. That's 270, so we swap to the 300mm lens. Now my starting point with this lens is 70mm, so I'm not getting the nice wide angles. Why would you use a 70 to 300? I haven't come to the conclusion as to why I would use it yet. Lens cap off, that would help, right? 70mm <laughs> gives me this. Uh, 
rather nice. Zooming in at 300 mil, not far off the 270 to be quite honest, but almost into the captain's bridge. I was trying to think what it was, bridge. So there you go. I've utilized 18 to 55, 18 to 140, 18 to 270, 70 to 300, you know, how do they compare in terms of landscape photography? You know, I'm still going to go with my Prime. It works for me. Not my Prime, you know, walkabout lens, 18 to 140. Now, just down here, we've got Shakespeare Cliff. And this is perhaps a good reason to have a 300 plus mil because I can get right up to the cliff. And that looks really nice. So let's take a shot of that, shall we? I'm in manual priority, f7.1 at 160th of a second. I'm wondering, <laughs> no, we're not, we're not in an exercise of trying to get great photographs here. You know, it, it is what it is. The exercise was comparing the lenses, right? But I've got some lovely washes of light so I can keep the lens on because of the things that I want to take photographs of are coming in with a focal range of more than 55. So I'm sticking at a minimum of 70. I've got the, the light washing down on the harbour. That's nice. But let's go over to France. Bonjour la France. Je suis ici. So I've got a variety of things that I can take photographs of here. Will it focus in? We've got France in the distance with a ferry crossing. Can you see that? And then if I come across here, we've got quite a few boats. And because I'm at 300 mil, I can get right over there. You know, I couldn't do that with a 55. I couldn't do that with a prime lens. <laughs> Imagine if I had a 400 mil, that would be amazing. I'm going to take two or three shots here. Looks like the boat out there is on fire. <laughs> So that's quite cool. And you know what? The other thing is, because I have the ability to post-process my image, I could even crop in a bit further, you know, so the image gives me the boat in the middle, but I can crop it right in. I like that. I hope it was in focus. It looked like it was in focus. I don't often use this lens. More boat, boatage pictures. <laughs> There's a lot of activity going out in the um, channel today. I'm always drawn. I have a fascination with history. And so when I think of the Battle of Britain and Hellfire Corner and Dunkirk and all of that stuff, it was all happening right here. <laughs> because you're out, right? And you're making the most of being out and taking photographs. So on the whole, I'm actually going out taking pictures all the time. I'm sometimes doing videos, but for the most part, if I'm out with my friends or I'm out walking, um, I'm in a town, whatever, you, you know, you've, you've probably seen it in the, in the um, videos that I do that are not related to photography, but I'll be out with my camera and it will be like this, won't it? It'll be around my neck. And it'd probably be around your neck as well. So you're out taking your photos and you've got your versatile 140. I'm actually going to look into an 18 to 300 because then it's all encompassing. And I actually then think to myself, do I need those other lenses? Why would I need if I know that unless I'm going to pay 1500, 1700, 2000, 3000 pound top quality lens, then there may be degradation, there may be deterioration. Maybe people will say, well, you know, the lenses are less quality because you're buying a cheapo lens. Or because you're limiting your photography to just this zoom, rather than saying, I'm specifically buying a 400 mil lens, doesn't do anything else than 400, because I want to do some nature photography. Well, you're probably not going to use one of these, are you? <laughs> It's good stuff. Picture of my thing. 
All I wanted to do was get out and compare the four lenses. I think I'll stick with my versatile 18 to 140 for the most part. So with that, I shall say thank you very much for watching. Perhaps give the video a thumbs up or even a dislike if that's your if that's your fancy. And also drop me a comment. Let's have a discussion. What lenses do you prefer? Would you use a versatile mini zoom? Okay, I'll stop waffling now. Thanks for watching and bearing with. I'll see you in another video.